If you have your Bible, I'm going to look at chapter 9 of the book of Daniel. I'm going to look at the scripture. I was going to do a, uh, I might wait till next hour. We're going to have a brief business meeting after we eat this afternoon. Um, I had this uh, presentation I was going to do. The top 10 archaeological discoveries that prove the historic reliability of the Bible. I might wait till next Sabbath since we're having technical difficulties. Coming on. I hope we don't have to buy a new TV on class not to cooperating. All right, we know the scripture, right? Second Corinthians seven fourteen says, "If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, confess their sins, and I will and pray, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will cleanse the land." And uh, the book of Daniel is set during and after period of national judgment. You know, I hope our nation, we actually are being judged right now. You know, if you read Deuteronomy, it talks about blessings and curses. <laughs> you read the, the chapter about curses, it sounds like what's happening in our country right now. Yeah, it is. Right? Yes, it is. Why would America be judged? You know, in, in some ways I think it's our own fault, but then, uh, like my uncle was saying, you know, we didn't. We have a non-representative government. We didn't vote for this guy. It's bringing all this stuff on us. And, we, and, we, and they're not obeying the Constitution at all. They've broken. They, right. they shredded the Constitution. Michael, and we the people are the sovereign, and they are Michael, tyranny. Yeah, you know? Michael Berry's been talking about it. And it's true. Um, you know, I, I, I see it. And it's happened. Like, they took down an entire YouTube channel I had for nothing. Just engaging in free speech. So... Uh, what do we see? Look at our look at our first if the Bill of Rights in our Constitution, freedom of speech, the right to peacefully assemble, the right to petition your government. That's what January sixth was really about. Um, you know, do we don't the, the right freedom of, freedom, freedom of the patriots. Freedom of worship. No, they co opted it. We were out there peacefully protesting and they had a, a they showed dressed yeah. as us provocateurs. Yeah. When are things gonna you know uh, uh, what's it? Clay Higgins. He's got the videos. He's the all the is coming, Mr. Ray. All the FBI agents wearing their business suits. They go in the restrooms of the Capitol and come out dressed as Trump supporters. And the, the two ghost buses. Yeah. They've got the paperwork on one of them. Or the the fake pipe, uh, pipe bombs. There's all kinds of stuff. You, you watch them. Somebody comes up and says there's a pipe bomb. They just sit there nonchalantly because they know it's not real. Ray Epps goes free. Other people who weren't even there served 20 years. Right. This is awful, but it but it happened. Guys beat up cops and go free. Right. While... People went in. This is disgusting. But someone went in the Capitol. Well, look at look at Hamas. They go in there. They disrupt oh. proceedings. Nothing happens to them. Or you had this man that filmed gay porn. And they, they didn't do anything to him. That's and yet the, a grandma the, goes in there. And, you know, eighty year old grandma takes a selfie and she's in prison for five years. I, I cannot believe that they you know no charges against that guy. What's it's yeah. Sodom and Gomorrah. It's sick. Can you imagine? Show it their, they, had, they can do whatever they want, and we better watch our stuff. They're out for us, and they can do whatever they want, rubbing right. their face. What is the statement we have over our... Uh, it's, it's supposed to be equal justice under law. We're not there yet. But we're being judged, but we're going to believe... Yesterday I did that, or the day before yesterday I did this. Is coming. I did this debate. I actually felt like I did a good job. But while I was there, I was talking to people, and they're talking about, you know, this lady says, I listen to the prophets. There are prophets speaking. The God's prophetic voice is operating the world. And it says, you know, my, my uncle, uh, he listens to Julie Green. I listen to Julie Green. What are they saying? They're saying that uh, God is going to deliver us. There's going to be a great restoration and a revival. And uh, exposures I want to receive that. And, 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 and whistleblowers, and we're seeing it right now. She. So let's, let's look at this chapter. I think this speaks to the situation we're in. I love this country. I want to see salvation. I, I, want, to see, I want to see deliverance. I want to see revival and repentance. I don't want to see judgment. We're the but, last hope on earth. That's why they want to destroy that's us. That's right. I, I believe that. Uh, Texas is a, the last hope for America. Yep. And America yes. is the last hope for the world. They're trying to put the light out. They're trying to put the light The light out. of freedom. The light of the gospel. All right, let's look at chapter 9 of, uh, uh, of Daniel. Then Darius the Mede, the son of Osirius, was raised to the throne of Chaldea. One of the things I was going to show, this is kind of amazing, they actually had this artifact in Houston. It's the Cyrus Cylinder. 
the last verse of Corinthians, the first verse of Ezra, what happened to the Jewish people is they were exiled. Jeremiah prophesied this would happen because of their sins, because of their iniquities. We were reading it this week. It's about slavery. Right? The Torah said you must release your slaves. And then they, you know, then Jeremiah preached and they released their slaves. And then they, you know, then they went and they rounded them all up and enslaved them again. Right? So what happened is the Lord gave them space for repentance and they refused to repent and judgment came. Seventy years. And finally under Cyrus. And Cyrus, uh, uh, the Cyrus Center, which they had in Houston, was a proclamation that the the exiles, including the Jewish people, could return to their homeland. So Darius the Mede, the son of Assyrius, he's raised the throne of Chaldea. To rebuild the temple. Yes, that was the mission. And in the year when he uh, when his reign began, I, uh, who but I, Daniel, uh, should discover by the reading of the old records how to compute the seventy years of of Jerusalem's widowhood. Such doom the Lord had foretold to the prophet Jeremiah. And with that, I turned. To the Lord my God, to pray to him I would, and sue for mercy, fasting, ever, sackcloth and ashes, my only wear. So what happened, by the way, this is uh, the Knox translation from the Latin Vulgate, which Jerome, Jerome actually went to the Holy Land, he and his assistant Paula, and he learned, he learned Hebrew from the rabbis and translated from ancient manuscripts from around the year 400. Almost probably, he could have had scrolls in front of him as old as the Dead Sea Scrolls or older. So I'm reading his translation from that. So what is Daniel doing? What we need to be doing, he's reading the word of the Lord. Yes. Reading the word of the Lord. And he's actually, they're still in the time of judgment. When is the time of deliverance going to come? Like I said, we pray that. If my people which should call my name shall, shall humble themselves and, and, and turn from their wicked ways and pray, then I will hear. So he prays. A prayer of repentance. And we need to repent. You know, we're in a time in a day and age when they call evil good and good evil. Like, look, you shouldn't do it as an adult, but I just, how can anybody think it's okay to do a sex change operation on a child? What's wrong with people? And yet, and, and, and if you, what if you say that? It's like, I don't think that right. Can't that, can't that young person wait till they're 18 years old? Oh, you're a transphobe. Oh, you're trying to, this kid could commit suicide. This, you know, we're trying to save him from suicide. It's ridiculous. I think we need to learn from Daniel. We need to be saying we. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely correct. That's what I get into. You know, my father once signed, he says, when we read the scriptures, God, you know, if God didn't use people that are messed up, he couldn't use anybody because we're all messed up except for Yeshua, right? You look at Abraham. Abraham, the father of the faithful. He doubts. Well, I mean, who wouldn't? He's an old man. Right. So his wife was a sister. She's, yeah, his half sister. <laughs> He's elderly. She's elderly. It had been a long time since she passed. You know, she couldn't have babies. It's physically, biologically impossible. But she was still beautiful. Men wanted her. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? But she was. She'd always been barren. So now, not only was she barren, the past, the time, the time of child, childbearing had been over. So he doubted. You know, God blesses the Arab people, too. But they're not the children of the covenant. That was an act of lack of faith. I'm going to do it my own way. God did not... God doesn't need our help. Right. Right. So, and we see it. Look at... Look at you know, I, don't tell him you're my wife. He's, a, he's afraid. He's not trusting the Lord. Look at the Israelites. I mean, you know, in, in one way, they saw... The awesome majesty of Yahweh with their own Egypt, eyes. The Red sea. And they couldn't believe. That's another thing people have been talking about. I was talking about this. It's like, there is going to be a Red Sea moment. People say that there doesn't look like there's any hope, but God is going to deliver his people. And I'm, I'm saying it's like, well, when is that going to happen? <laughs> yes. It can't happen soon enough. But God can show his glory but, through that. But Jonathan's correct. My father says, you know, like I'm saying... David, the man after God's own heart. It, you know, it offends me that a man who could, you know, he's king, he could get any woman he wants. Murder and adultery. Right. That he would take, you know. You have a, he already had a harem. He had a dozen wives already. He got a new one. Why is he taking another man's wife? And then he, you know, he tries to cover it up and he kills his one of his 
his heroes. Here are the great heroes, the, the men who did what valiant deeds. Tennis? You read it. Yeah. Uriah the Hittite. He's one of the valiant men. Yahweh said, you murdered Uriah the Hittite with the sword of the Ammonites. If, if he had a home close enough to the castle yeah. that you could look over the castle and see his home, Right. He was a man given great, great um, honor, honor right. for his deeds. Right. This wasn't just nobody. So, so what we're saying is, or look at the look at the apostles. And in one way, if the stories are true, think about Thomas. Right? He he goes all the way to India. He, I mean, his Greeks and Romans did travel to India at that time. So it's, it's with that, we know, not only is it a possibility, we know that, that, that Romans and Greeks were going to India. And that's the story of Paul, Thomas went to India. But what do you remember about Thomas? Doubting. Well, you know, when, when they're going to Lazarus' tomb, all the all the apostles were, were afraid, except for Thomas. Thomas a says... Went first. A woman who was the least afraid went first. Right. So Thomas said, let's go, and if we have to, we'll die with the Lord. But what, what does it say about you know, Yeshua told Thomas he's going to rise again from the dead. He saw there. He was at the resurrection of Lazarus. Surely if Yeshua could resurrect Lazarus, he could resurrect himself too, right? But he didn't believe it. The apostles should have been in the tomb. Peter, the doubter. Uh, oh, not the, Thomas the doubter, Peter the denier. It's funny, these Indian Christians, because, I mean, the... the I, to them, I mean, that, that one of the 12 apostles visited India, that's a big deal, right? Yeah. Thomas is like a big a deal as, you know, as the Virgin Mary is the Catholic Church, right? right. And like, oh, it's doubting Thomas. And these Indian Christians says, well, you have denying Peter, <laughs> you know, you're going you're gonna, to uh, attack our apostle. We can say the same thing about yours, right? right. As, uh, you know, Peter's the, the apostle. So what we see is, these, is God uses flawed men and flawed women. I mean, look, even Sarah herself, she laughed. She laughed when the Lord told her Isaac that she was going to have a child, right? Right. She, she was mean and cruel to Hagar. And it was her idea. She told her husband to do that. That was part of their culture back then. So she comes with this, like, she cooks up a scheme, she implements it, and then she torments that woman that's a slave, didn't have any free will in the matter, did what her master, his mistress told her to do, and then she's harassing her. So God uses flawed people. But my dad was saying, you look at Daniel, almost every person in the Bible, even even Joseph, he, you know, Joseph should have been using wisdom against his brother. Well, you know, not against them, but he should have used wisdom regarding his brothers. You know, he was this little upstart telling us, you know, he, he should have been sensitive to their feelings. He wasn't. I'm going to rule over you, basically. I mean, maybe he didn't mean it that way, but that's how I come across to them. So he wasn't using wisdom at that time. So we see all the flaws and all the even even Peter and Paul, right? Paul's getting mad at, at Barnabas, who the Bible says is a good man. But Daniel, we don't have any record of Daniel committing any, you know, any sin. In the story, he seems to be a righteous man. But what does Daniel do? He confesses his own sin. He identifies himself with the sins of his nation. My father said was saying that. It's like look at the book of Daniel. What 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 I mean, there's he's a According to the scriptures, there's no record of him like, like many other people used by God. It records their faults and their failures and their sins. But not Daniel. He seems to be a very righteous man. And yet, he is, I, he, it's like he feels like he's culpable for the sins of the nation. He identifies himself, himself with his sinful nation. Even though he, and he's conscious of his own sin, even though his sins are not recorded in the scriptures. Prayed I then to the Lord my God, and made confession of my sins. In these words which are following, mercy, mercy, Lord God, the great, the terrible, to those who love thee, so gracious, to those who heed thy commandments, truth, uh, troth keeping still, sin we have, and wronged thee, rebelled we have, and forsaken thee, turned our backs on decree and a word of thine, nor heeded thy service, the prophets, that spoke to us in thy name, to king and prince and the common folk that gendered us, fault with thee is none, ours, Lord, to blush for wrongdoing that has offended thee. Men of Judah, citizens of Jerusalem, Israel near at hand, Israel banished far away. And what plight thou seest? Blush we, king and prince of ours, fathers of ours that did thee wrong. Be it thine, O Lord, to have mercy and to forgive. So far we have strayed from thee, so deaf to thy divine voice. When the prophets have served thee, bade us follow thy law. A whole people 
who that would transgress, transgress thy command and turn a deaf ear to thy calls. What wonder it if it fell upon us drop by drop, the avenging curse that God's servant Moses wrote up. Like I mentioned earlier, read the blessings and curses. And it sounds like read what's happening to our nation today. Our sins have delivered it. If yonder unexplained punishment befell Jerusalem, it was a threat fulfilled. Warning we had of it. We had the princes that govern us. It's all written in the book of Deuteronomy. You know what they say? There's this talk about national repentance. It came under Josiah. What happened? We talked about this yesterday about Joash. Godless kings allowed the temple to fall into ruin or worse yet, Let's bring some prostitutes in here. Male and female prostitutes. It's like, what in the Lord's name are they doing? Oh, let's build an, an idol to the, the God of the sun. Oh, uh, you know, I went to Damascus. I saw a pagan idol there. Let's get rid of this, this altar. We saw a, a, a pagan altar in, in uh, Damascus. Let's build a pagan altar here. Let's, let's throw the, the altar built by, you know, according to the commands of Moses by Saul. I'm going to throw that one out. That's the thing the evil kings were doing. But Joash was like, we're going to restore the temple. Josiah, we're going to restore the temple. So they're going through the ruins of the temple, collapsing, neglected building, and what do they find? Deuteronomy, as the scholars say. Jeremiah, uh, sorry, uh, Josiah reads it. And he repents. Consoles the prophet, this whole thing. What are we to do? Well, since you're seeking the Lord in repentance, the Lord is going to stay his hand of judgment. That's what the prophet has said. But it mentioned, he's, he's mentioning, Moses wrote about all this, right? No misfortune overtook us, but that which the law of Moses foretold. And it's interesting, even though that's written towards Israel, what we read in Deuteronomy, like I said, it sounds like what's happening to our nation now. Yes. Yeah. And yet, O Lord, appease thy anger. We wish not, nor leave our sinning. Uh, we would not appease our anger or leave our sinning, but we think ourselves, how well thy word thou keepest. Right. What yonder is vain, not blessing, the, de grind, the divine regard brought us. Be our punishment what it will, not ours to find fault with the God which we have disobeyed. You know, when people fall into misfortunes, they get mad at God, right? right? right. Oh God, why are you why are all these bad things happening? We should thank and bless the name of the Lord every day. That's right. How's the hymn go? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Yes. Count thy blessings. Look at look at uh, at Job. You know he had all this. The Lord blessed him with prosperity, wealth, and he lost everything, including his family. Finally, you know the devil's inclinations, you know, or machinations. He lost his very health, and yet he did not blaspheme the name of the Lord. Even though his own wife, you should just go ahead, just go ahead and do it. Just blaspheme the name of God. I will not do that. Thou art the Lord our God, whose constraining our power has, restrained, has rescued thy people from the land of Egypt. Yeah, think about our, you know, so that's like I, I, we always think, look at the, the moment, and we don't look back and think about how God has blessed us and delivered us throughout our whole life. Who hast won thyself glory to on this our day, Lord? We have been sinners. We have shown ourselves unworthy of all thy faithful dealings with us. Isn't that not true about our, if you look in our hearts, right? But thou wilt let thy indignation fall on Jerusalem, on that holy mountain of thine. Too long for our sins, the sins of our fathers before us, all of our neighbors have held Jerusalem. And us thy people in contempt. God of our race, give audience at last this prayer, thy plea to thy servants before thee. For thine own honor, restore the sanctuary, which now lies forlorn. Right. To the smile of thy favor. My God, give ear and listen to us. Open our eyes and see how desolate is the city of ours that claims to be thy own. No merit of ours, nothing but thy great love emboldens us to lay our prayers at thy feet. Thy hearing, O Lord, and thy pardon. Thy heed, O Lord, and for thy aid. For thine own honor, my God, deny thyself no longer to thy city and thy people which is, thou hast called thine own. So we need to implore God for his mercy, for his grace, to restore us. Right? right? We need a great restoration. We need a great revival. And if we cry out for it, the Lord will send it. Then Daniel says, Thus prayed I, thus I did confess my own sins right, right. and the sins of my fellow Israelites, right, right. pouring out supplication, and there in the presence of my God from that holy mountain, which is his dwelling place, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Yes. Right? It's amazing. Like I said, I was in Israel. 
And it's like, this seems like a nice, it's just the size of New Jersey. It's not a big country, right? Kind of nice. I, I enjoy being in Galilee. It's a very beautiful, you know, scenic place. And Jerusalem, too. So much history there. And, and yet that's the, like the fulcrum of you know, the, the whole world, yes. right? Because it's a spiritual battle. And I know I was talking about it. I, I just cannot understand. I have no, um, you know, I've, I've lived in a lot of Arab countries. I have, you know, I don't like radical Islam at all. But as far as the people, a lot of them are good people. There's a lot of there's millions of Arab Christians, even though they're minority. Um, but this battle is a spiritual battle. Hamas is totally of the devil, and it's like, could you imagine? Twenty years after 9/11, there's so many people sympathizing with a group that's no different from ISIS. Right. Yesterday, Joe Biden. It was awful. He's confused. He thinks Egypt is Mexico. <laughs> it's like. I want to talk about General Sisi. The, the, it's a long tunnel. It's got a long tunnel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are pyramids in both countries. They're different. Um, <laughs> maybe, that's, maybe that was it. But he started <laughs> off trying to attack Israel. You know, Israel's <laughs> gone too far. I don't like anything. He's attacking Israel for defending themselves yeah, from Hamas. Yeah, went too far. General Sisi needs... And then, yeah. That was awful. Did anybody tell us They released a report... They recently a report saying he has advanced dementia. The next day he comes and speaks. He proves the report yeah. true. Right? Right. Mexico and Egypt. I mean, how, how can you confuse Mexico and Egypt? Well, same way you can talk to dead. Yeah, yeah he thinks he thinks Francis Mitterrand and yeah. Hermit Cole are still alive. And they died like 15, 20 years ago, the both of them. Yeah, he sees dead people. Yeah. It's 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 sad where we're at. The sixth sense make remake. Yes. So um, let's not, let's bless Israel. That doesn't mean Israel always does the, you know, the right thing if they're doing something wrong. But, but they're not doing, I don't think defending themselves from a, an attack like that right. while they're, they're still holding these hostages, including children, raping. How could, I just don't understand that, that, that level of evil, what they've done. Horrific atrocities. They're not the bad guys. It's demonic. It is demonic. deep state in every country. That's right. Every major country. So there's good and bad in every country. Yes. Thus prayed I, confess my sins, the sins of my fellow Israelites, is verse 20, pouring out supplication. And they're in the presence of my God from that holy mountain, which is his dwelling place. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Wow. Yeshua died in Jerusalem, right? It's a very right. important place. And I was still at my prayer when the human figure of Gabriel, Gabriel appears several times in the book of Daniel. And he's the one that announces Yeshua is going to be born. He appears to the Virgin Mary. Yes. He appears to Zechariah. Right? In the temple. Zechariah is offering incense. And in the holy place, there's Gabriel, who hadn't <clears throat> appeared like that since the time, you know, 400 years earlier. He's back. And I've seen in my vision, flip, he flew swiftly to his side. I, I kind of wonder, I think there's a, usually, usually angels <clears throat> appear as men. Now, the, the non-humanoid Angels have wings like the cherubim or the seraphim. I think there's only one place you have female women, uh, female angels with uh, wings. It says he flew here. I don't know if he's flying. He might be flying like Superman, right? Superman doesn't have wings. I don't know. But he's flying. He flies swiftly to my side. It was the hour of the evening sacrifice when he reached me. And with these words, he enlightened me. Daniel. Gabriel says, Daniel, my errand is to instruct thee and to give thee discernment. Even as thy prayer began, a secret was disclosed, and I'm here to make it known to thee. So well, heaven loves thee. God cares about us. He loves us. Amen. Those aren't just words we say, but I wrote that it's true. For God so loved the world. God loves us not just collectively. He loves us individually. Right. And just like he knows every hair on our head, he knows our name. And he's thinking of you on the cross. He's... He shares the Godhood. He knows everything. So on the cross, he's thinking about everyone he was dying for. Which means you, specifically. Mark thee well the message and read the revelation aright. It was ordained that this people of his and that holy city of thine should wait 70 years before their guilt, their guilt is gone. Sin indeed wronged, uh, righted before God's everlasting favor is restored and the visions and prophecies come true. And he who is all holiness receives his anointing. This is very interesting how this is translated right here. Let's listen to this. Be assured of this and mark it well. A period of seven weeks must go by, another period of 72 weeks, or 62 weeks, between the order to rebuild Jerusalem and the coming of the Christ to be your leader. Exactly. 
He kind of says that. That's what the anointed right one, right? right? right. The Christ. Right. Street of all you will be built again through a time of distress when the 62 weeks must pass. Okay. So Gabriel says, and this happened under Ezra and Nehemiah, Jerusalem, which was a heap of ruins at that time, will be rebuilt. But then a certain period of time is going to pass, and what's going to happen? Time has passed before the Christ is done to death, and the people will disown him and have none of him. Did that happen? Yes. Then the army of an invading leader will come and destroy both the city and sanctuary, so that his taking away will mean utter destruction. Only ruin is to be left when that war is ended. What happened after Yeshua died? And there was a righteous remnant of Israel, like the 12 apostles and the 72 he spoke of and thousands of others, but the nation as a whole rejected Yeshua, as the prophecy stated. Right. What happened afterwards? Did the Romans destroy the temple? Like it says here? Yes. High covenant we'll make before another week is done and folks are many, but when that week is run half its course, offering and burnt sacrifice will be none. Is there offering and burnt sacrifice going on now? Yes, no. no. And the temple all shall be defilement and desolation. Until all is over and all is fulfilled, the desolation shall continue. What's going on right now? You know, there is a an abomination, a, a, des a desecrating sacrilege right now over the holy place. I, I you know, I, I accumulate all this archaeological evidence, but this guy named Ritzmeyer, I know people have different theories, but if you look at the rock and the dome of the rock, there's a platform carved into it and it, where it's indented, and the dimensions fit. The, the, the size of the Ark of the Covenant. And if you do the measurements, if that's the Holy of Holies, it all fits out from there. So there's a carved platform that which the Ark of the Covenant rested. And where is it? In the middle of a mosque. And what does that mosque say? Allah has no son. Jesus is a you know not the Savior of the world. Blasphemies! It's a golden crown, like on the creature that came out of the... Yeah, uh, you know, the seven heads, and there's all these crowns, and where are all those crowns? Blasphemies. Yes, sir. Blasphemies. Yes, sir. That's what we see right now. Yes, in Yahweh's holy place, blasphemies inscribed in the Arabic language all around that that sacrilege. If there is anyone in the world who publicly speaks out against Muhammad, uh -huh. they want to kill, they want to call it a a, an offense against their people, right. and yet right there in that mask is is uh, a, a, the sacrilege to Christ. Right, right. right remember, in the holy of holy. I remember in uh, back in two thousand, it's been over twenty years, you know, almost twenty five years ago. Uh, you know they they're, they're trying to they're trying to get ready for the two thousandth anniversary of the birth of Yeshua. Of course, it's, yeah. it, it counters off a little bit. Right. And the Muslims are oh we're going to build a mosque over this like. You people say you believe that, you sh that Jesus is a the prophet Isa, and yet you're trying to, you know, seize these holy places well, uh, and build build a a, a structure to, to glorify a jihadist, you know, or or like what they did. They went to the church nativity, you know, and those priests. It's like you're going to get those bodies out of here right now. We're not going to have it. The audacity. Could you imagine going and killing Israelis and, and going to the church, the nativity? We don't know if that's the exact location, but it's, it could be. A, a, a church historically identified as a place where Yeshua was born. Yes, sir. And they're going around killing people and trying to, oh, we're going to, you know. That, can you believe that that happened? And you know what they do? And these, they're Arabic. You know, these, these priests there, if, if somebody dies in jihad, they're going to try to seize it and make it into a mosque. You're not going to take the church, dedicate the, the birth of the Messiah, and change it to a mosque. Get your terrorists out of here. We're not yes. going to have it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, it's, it's kind of amazing where, uh, I mean, recent discoveries show that the lives of Muhammad is probably all fabricated. We don't even know what really happened and who this guy really was. All these stories were written like, you know, 60 years and the Quran went through various verses before it became the... And it's awful, if you read it. It's a mess. You mean they go through that many versions and they come up with that? <laughs> yeah, have you ever tried to read it? It's not there. I mean, it's the sword, right? Right. <laughs> Leave it or, or, you know. That's how they grew. They took over Christian lands and they would... Uh, the, the jizya. How much was the jizya? As much as they wanted. They could take every from us, Jizya. I can't do it. 
All right, we need to conclude with that. Uh, have refreshments. But let's listen to what the Lord is. Could you? That, that's a pretty specific prophecy, right? The Messiah will be rejected. He will die. And the temple, you know, to the... Gabriel said it all. Hundreds of years before it happened. Yes, John. Before you move on to the next section, there's a song that I would like to sing if, you, if you're okay with it. Well, we should probably... I'll let you come up and sing it. We should probably uh, conclude. It, it, what you were saying in your, in, in your sermon made me rethink of this song. But come on up and sing it. One of my favorites, but what you were saying made me think of it. Chris. By the way, I, when I went to uh, when I went to Jerusalem, I actually went into the church of the Holy Sepulchre. I, I was I was there, and uh, they had this little you know. It's interesting. There's there's like a cavern under the the sanctuary. You crawl under there, and they put a silver star on, on the, the floor. floor. This is where Yeshua was actually born. Yeah. It's kind of a, it's interesting. There's a picture of me. I took a photograph. Or I had somebody take a photograph of me touching the... <coughs> traditionally, you know, tradition's not always accurate, but you never know. Who knows? The Bible says he's born in Bethlehem. That was in Bethlehem. Sometimes traditions are correct. All right, let's, uh, let's have Jonathan sing a song for us. Thank you, Lord, for the trials that come. In that way I can grow each day as I let you lead. And thank you, Lord, for the patience those trials bring. In that process of growth, I can learn to care, but it goes against the way I am to put my human nature down and let the spirit take control of all I do. Cause when those trials come, my human nature shouts the thing to do. And God's soft prompting can be easily ignored. I thank you, Lord, with each trial I feel that you're there to help lead and guide me away from wrong cause you promised Lord that with every testing that your way of escaping is easier to but it goes against the way I am to put my human nature down and let the spirit take control of all I do. Cause when those trials come, my human nature shouts the thing to do. God's soft promptings can be easily ignored. I thank you, Lord, for the victory that growing brings in surrender of everything. Life is so worth a while, and I thank you, Lord, that when everything's put in place, out in front I can 
prophets, Daniel consulted the scriptures and the Lord sent his angel to speak to him and prophesied the coming of the suffering and the death, the redeeming death of Yeshua. It's written, right? We read it today. It's in the scriptures. So God spoke to us. And if we, if we seek the Lord, the Lord will speak to us through his Holy Spirit, right? Amen. Yeah. 